It was pretty funny. Yesterday, it was 72 degrees in the afternoon. I was working on repairing the FZR. I'm still doing some bodywork damage repair on that. That's on the back burner now. It's looking like it's going to be a nice day today, but just didn't work out that way. It got up in the morning, and it's looking like it's going to rain, and it's cloudy, and it went down to 42 degrees. Ah! So I'm going to resequence up the day and do some body work. I, I was hoping I'd get a ride today. <laughs> some days you just can't win. But it is getting more spring-like every day. The flowering trees are there. The fish are starting to eat. Summer's on the way. And maybe once I get the body work done on this and the paint is drying, it'll really feel like summer to me because I really had, believe it or not, even on that day that I damaged all the body work on this side, the bike rode so well. I was just so happy when I got home. I know it's going to be a, uh, a winning member of the pitching staff here, and we do have a winning, a winning pitching team here. I'm not sure we're going to the playoffs. I'm not sure we're going to be able to even play more games. Anyway, time to get a day sequenced up. And one of the things I always think it, for me works out well because I just like having multiple motorcycles and riding different bikes with different characteristics regularly. I get bored when I have to ride the same bike two or three times in a row. But so having a small collection like this really floats my boat. And of course, the next one up in a pitching rotation is our beloved Suzuki that I've had since it was brand new. Now here's a sign that summer is here. When the fish start eating, the fish know they're coming out of hibernation. They know summer's on the way. I know summer's on the way. But that FZR has got to get fixed. So we got two objectives here. The JB Weld has dried up inside here. I want to sand that down just a little bit. Then I want to prep the whole outside once again. And then the last thing of the day will be how much work I can get done on prepping this up. There is some severe damage here. And we're going to try to use our magic with the CA in every way possible here. And I'm going to try to share this technique. It's a good one, and it's one that... Here's, the, here's an example. If we can save a lot of this paint, just the outlines of it, that I don't have to remask everything. And as soon as I see I'm losing something, I'll make a pattern of it, of course. But in retrospect, I also have this piece to work as a mirror image. So, and that should get it perfect. I also have a replacement decal. I'm sure I can't save the decal. There's a piece missing. So that's going to be challenging. It's going to be a challenging day. So just to start with, I'm just going to, I'm not going to try to make this like a final finish, but I want to smooth it as much as possible. I found it's really handy when I'm doing this kind of stuff and I'm making a lot of dust. By the way, JB Wells sands really nice. Just rather than just shake it like a like a, a, a rag doll, this is so handy to have. And what I did, I took the the new. We bought a new one, put it for our upper the kitchen and whatnot, and then kept the old one for the shop. Kind of a handy thing, and see what's nice around now, just picking up stuff off the table just makes the work area a lot nicer. And then, but the next part of this is just to, this is thousand grit, get everything, I'll sand the whole part again with thousand grit. I want to make sure I don't have any spots where the paint's not going to stick as, as good as I hopefully can get it to stick. And actually, of all things, the sun came out, Karen yelled down, the sun came out, the sun came out. So I, what that's going to allow me to do is maybe get a coat of primer on this, get this out in the sun dry, and the sun will be our friend today, if that's the case. And you never know with the weather. This is, it's almost worse now than it is in the winter. At least in the winter, you know, it's every day is pretty much going to be a problem to work around. But we did have that nice day yesterday. Not sure where this is going today, but it was 72 and in the 40s today. <sighs> Now, most of the stuff that you can do, and this is a John Pothia trick with a wet glove, 
you can feel any spot. I can feel little spots here. I'm going to have to sand them a little bit more. At this point in time, I don't really need the block. I could use it, but just getting this all smoothed in so that that coat of primer sticks. And I have it right now. I have that the primer, it's a sealer primer because in areas like this, I don't want to go in and loosen up any of the old paint. And I'll back mask off the parts of this that I don't have to really refinish up to the yellow. Now I got to paint the white or else the yellow is not going to be a good match. So I've really got primer, white, and yellow before I can even put the decals on this. But if it's a sunny day, I can get a lot of that done. If it's a warm day, if it's 40 degrees, be a little more difficult. If it's 50, 60, 70, it'll go a lot quicker. Now it's warmed up a lot out there. Went out with doing some stuff for Karen before and it was, it's getting up there. Maybe another 70 degree day. Now one of the things I wanted to do, it's a little upgrade. The joints where these two pieces join, what had happened, I had put reinforcements in here, number one, and I had also done let a lot of paint build up along the edge. So I'm going to back mask this. I want to sand off all the old paint because you don't see this. This is inside. But if this is these two pieces pressed together and if there's a lot of paint, this joint was not as good as I could have made it. And I'll try to tighten this joint up. This is just a little bit of a maybe we'll get a little upgrade out of this anyway. We'll find out right away. Because when I go to fit the other piece, I'll make sure I get all the paint off of that and back mask it so I don't get a lot of paint building up in here. All I need to do is have the yellow paint come down through here, an eighth of an inch will be fine. See, I've done a lot of repair here. That's the problem. Right here, there's a lot of repair. There's a lot of reinforcements, and I don't want the parts to crack. So I've got to walk a fine line here. Now I want to wipe this part off with prep oil, and then go down and back mask off the stripe. I was trying to think of a way I could only paint one side yellow, but then you know what, I know for sure this is not going to match if I do that. So I really have to bite the bullet. I think I can save that, that black stripe. Now, of course, we're going to find out if I have to paint it over a half of it. As I'm wiping it down, I'm trying to feel for any little spots that might need, still need some touch up here. It looks like the repair is fine, and it's this area down here that I have concern with. It's a very hard part to paint because you can't grab it. There's almost no parts of it that are flat. But we'll get it done. Now it's lucky for us that when we started this project, I didn't anticipate this crash, but we, we bought plenty of tape. And right now, what I want to do is go right to about an eighth of an inch of the edge just to avoid paint buildup. Of course, if I didn't do this, I could sand it off, but a lot easier not to even have it on there. That'll protect us from, ha and I'll do the same thing on the other side, from having a big giant paint buildup. Now, what I ought to do, see, I'm getting smart in my old age. I don't want to have any paint buildup on this because the bulbs snap in there so nice now. I want to keep that fit. So back masking this up. I'm going to obviously redo all the flat black so I don't even have to be cute about it here. Just make it as simple as possible. I want to make sure this is all tack rag down, the tape edges are down, everything's clean. Get rid of anything dirty that's around here, dirty gloves, dirty towels. Now the objective now is to get on a coat of sealer primer. The reason for the sealer primer, I don't want any of the thinner in the, the white or the yellow paint to go down and loosen up, especially around our body work. Or if we need to work on that body work even more, and you never know that that's you never know 
So here's a little tip that's worth its weight in gold. Whenever you're going to do a job like this, where we're really not going to do a lot of sanding, hopefully, on the primer coat, unless we have some rough areas, and notice the word sealer, that's the key thing. So I want to use a brand new can, because a brand new can will always spray just a little bit nicer than when you get to the bottom of the can, for whatever reason, it starts spitting and different things. So the, the idea, I may have to get a couple extra coats around here. I don't know yet until I do it. I made some little pieces of cardboard to shove in by the headlight, so I, I don't want to get stuff, paint and primer and everything down in where that headlight, because it just clicks in so nice right now. So the idea is to get a very thin amount along the tape, the minimum around the tape, not get a big, and then the same thing with the white and the yellow, get a minimum so we don't have a big thick edge at the end of the stripe, because the stripe we're doing in reverse now, and I don't want to build up an edge. It's a very difficult part to paint because you've got to hold it in various angles. And the part of this that I really was concerned about looks like it's pretty good where the bodywork is. Now it's hard to believe 48 hours ago that was a <laughs> damaged part, but I tried to minimize the amount of primer up there. Again, we're just using a primer for glue. I'm not using it like you would on a new part that you would want to sand, you would want to use it for filler. This is just a, a dusting coat. A very, very, very light coat. We'll put that in the garage to dry. Now I'm looking to see if how this is drying up. In a perfect world, it won't rain this afternoon, but it got really cold in the last hour. Like it's going to rain. That, that really has to dry in this cold temperature. I don't know. Maybe I can get it done at the end of the day. I wanted to get the white on. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I wonder if this bike will look cool with just this fairing on it. <laughs> Am I lazy? I could go fix the other fairing for crying out loud. Anyway, that's going to dry. We got to play, play it by ear with the weather. It's looking like it's going to rain any minute. Well, our parts are out there drying. Nothing's better than having a good coffee break. See if the rain's coming. And if not, I hope we get that white painted today too. Give it a couple hours to dry. So one of the things I can do, I got a couple, I'd like to let it dry at least an hour. See how the weather's going to be. I can get this part at least cleaned and prepped a little bit. Again, another big job. But what I'm trying to do is sequence, bounce back and forth while one is dry and work on the other one. I, I would not do both that I'm going parallel steps. I like to bounce back and forth. Like a rubber ball, I guess. <laughs> Now, no matter what kind of job I'm doing, the sequence always stays the same. It's thoroughly clean off all the wax. This is going to be difficult to get that radius there. This is going to be difficult. Nothing impossible here. This I've got to build a little piece for this. May have to use some filler in there. I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. This will be uh, relatively straightforward around here. See, we're missing a piece of the decal, so this is going to be a problem. To get this all flat and and hopefully get another decal right on top of it but that's why they pay us the big money so as always step one is and in this case because we're not in any big rush we're waiting for paint to dry i'm going to let a nice big coat of simple green just sit on here and soak gonna finish my coffee up let this soak and sit i gotta get some prep wool on this the, the reason you always do this first is because if you just go take sandpaper and put it over something with silicone or wax, it drives it down at a molecular level, down into the paint. And then somewhere down the road, you have fish eyes. And we have had our fair, fair share of fish eyes. We don't want any more. Keep them on the fish. Keep them on the gavilta fish. Now, one thing I got to do, I got to remember to do is where this 
part joins up, mask this off, get rid of some of this extra paint, because these two pieces come together and they leave a seam. So on the original one, I had so much paint that the seam was bigger than it had to be. Now, of course, like any cleaning agent, the longer you let it sit, the better it's going to do at dissolving the grease. And I've been just doing this with my bare hands, but so I don't want to drive any of that silicone down into the paint if I can possibly help it. And I'm hoping I can get through this whole thing without tremendous, terrible fish eyes. Now, see here, <clears throat> this is where having that CA method that I use really works because otherwise, to strip all this paint and go right down to fiberglass, you'd have a monster. Oh, you'd have, you'd have so many hours. The CA is going to hopefully save us, save our bacon. Save, a, save at least a couple of days of body work. Now another thing, once you're dealing with the silicone and the prep wall, it's a good idea to just deep six the towels. Not try to save a, a dollar on towels and make yourself a fish eye problem. And I can usually tell, as soon as I hit this with sandpaper, if I've got all of it off. If it comes up that nice dull flat, oh that's really deep, I didn't realize how deep that was. Good thing I've got plenty of CA. And I always buy the CA from Brodak.com because it's fresh. He has a giant turnover. If you buy it from a very small hole in the wall hobby shop somewhere, what could happen? It goes out of code very quickly. Yeah, we've got a lot of work to do. It's, it's a big job, but somebody's got to do it. And good old prep wall just before we sand. Now, model airplane sanding, just for people that maybe have no idea about this, is for many years there was a product called Sickens M600, which we were able to get. We're not able to get it now because of New Jersey law. It was a degreasing agent. Sickens M600, we used to wet sand using M600. And it worked. There's a lot of videos out on the airplane channel that I've done that show how to do that, but again, you can't buy the product anymore, and you have to work in a well-ventilated area, and we've, this product that they sell now, it's called Prep All, it's like watered down M600, like 50-50 water, dish water or something, but if, you, if you're in a state that you can buy Sickens M600, boy, you're way ahead of the game. Oh, we're gonna be ready to sand here momentarily. I'll mix up some water, some soapy water, some thousand grit paper, now let's get to it. Basically the whole part has to get sanded with thousand grit anyway. And there's no point in trying to skip areas or go over them. There's just no way to beat the system that I know of. Because obviously at the end of this we're going to clear everything. So even though maybe we can save some of this. And I'm not sure if we can save any. Some. But I'm trying to not remove so much material that I can't use, use these at least for pattern lines. I don't have to make up too many patterns in the end. But that middle piece where the FZR is, we have extra, extra decals, of course. That looks like it's going to be a definite, a definite new decal. So one way or another. One way or the other, we're going to have to do it. And this is about the time where I can't wait till Miles gets a little older. He's playing in a little league now. So I guess the little league is more fun. And maybe he's right. I don't know. I did both. Anyway, once I see that I've got the whole part flat, then I can move on. But until it's flat, flat and clean, then I can start doing my body work. Now, I'm sure there are people that would find it more cost effective just to get a new part. The only problem is I'm not one of them. Now I got about half of the part sanded. Still didn't even start the body work, but it's supposed to rain about an hour from now, so I want to get that white paint on, get it in the garage drying. Well, it certainly looks like we beat the rain, but <laughs> you never really know. It is supposed to rain this afternoon. 
to get that in the garage. Actually, when I look at the bodywork, the bodywork looks fine. I always like to see how this is drying up. Oh, that looks like it's gonna be fine. There was one spot on the other side. I need some, right where the bodywork is, needs a little sanding, a little touch up, but well, we got one step ahead and beat the rain. And of course that's gotta dry overnight anyway before we do anything with it. Well, it was really nice to beat the uh, system, but we still have half of this part to sand. And the unfortunate part is nobody comes over and does it for me. Yeah, because there were so many parts of this I couldn't salvage, it's just going to be easier for me to take the, uh, the decal right off. And it comes off in pieces, of course, because it's got a lot of clear on one side. But this certainly is a lot easier. This will save a, a lot of work. Being able to just take this off, then if this were painted on, I'd, I'd have no choice other than to just sand it. But the idea here is to get it to end at a, a reasonable spot anyway. I guess we're going to find out. It just comes off in pieces. Now with all these pieces, they all have to be blended in. And this is going to be very time, very, very time consuming. And I looked at, even there's some cracks in the paint in the white, so this basically the whole part has to be repainted. So we're going to try to do this in pieces, because I want to maintain the paint lines. I don't want to, my, my goal here is I don't want to lose all these tape lines. So if I can do this in pieces, well, I'm going to try anyway. We're going to find out. Even all of these pieces have to be blended flat now. That's the next step, and this is... This is where the decal is going to go, so I want this area to be perfectly flat before we do anything else. Now, where this decal is going to go, there are some things that feather in. This is a feathered edge. That's not a problem. But then there are some edges I can still feel with my fingertips. That's going to require a few things. I'm going to fill this, this low spot with thin CA, wipe it, and also along the edge here, the thin CA will work underneath it. And then I'll be able to block sand this just a little bit nicer and flatter than I otherwise would. And that's the area where the decal is going to be. So I'll spend quite a bit of time getting this as flat as I can. Now the thing that's difficult to do is to have the paint and the bodywork are different hardnesses. And to try to get it that that edge feathers. If one is hard, picture putting a brick up against a block of butter and then you try to sand them well the butter disappears the brick stays there same thing here so this the way we we kind of stack the deck is I take a hard material that's just as hard or maybe harder than the paint let that sit in there let it work its way underneath just wipe it same thing here and I'll go along the whole edge any place I have one of these spots that ultimately I'm going to want to feather it in before I go any further. Now the thing is to go over it by hand and I've been doing it by hand with a sanding block and some 180 and you see what happens it picks up big big amounts of uh, what look like paint it is paint but if you do it with a block, eventually you'll get this all feathered in. Now that's a really critical thing because that's where our decal is going to go, that FCR decal. And I, when I'm done, I want to be able to close my eyes and not feel anything here. Now we can finish some of this sanding off with some 400 paper. In this case, it's easier just to trim this off. Let me trim this before we do it. It's that constant putting CA on and sanding it off that gives you that blend. And that blend is very, very difficult to get. When you have a hard surface and a smooth one, super difficult. All right, so we got a new piece of sandpaper here. And this should be even, even better. And plus, I can, we're beating the rain here. I can't believe it. Oh, I love it. Can you see that powder blowing away? Oh, yeah. 
much as a machine sanding is good it always has to be finished up by I think I'm holding my hand underneath it because I've got I've got plenty of little spots now that have cracks in them and I'm gonna do that thing of separating the crack letting a thin CA go down in there this is where it's gonna start taking a lot of time and I probably won't finish today because tonight we're going to the Little League game Miles is gonna play in a Little League so we enjoy going down there and watching the practice. Tonight is actually a game, so we're going to have a lot of fun. So I'm only going to get to a point. I'm going to try to get as much of this body work done as I can. The white is drying out in the garage. It's been an exciting day. And the thing to always remember about this and is you can't sand a hard edge and a soft edge. It never works whether it's an airplane or a, a car or what. And the CA, now see what happens is, and I've shown this before, that allows it to be a hard edge. And you'll eventually, if you just keep sanding it with a block or a machine, you'll get that nice feather edge. And without the feather edge, the quality's not going to be there. Well, for us today, we just ran out of time and we are not going to compromise our uh, going down to the Little League or Miles will beat me to a pulp. Anyway, I'll finish up the sanding tomorrow. There's still some filling, some sanding. And then I'm going to have to come up with, and I, don't, I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet. I want to back mask one color at a time. And I'll explain on the next video. It's going to be an involved thing trying to figure out. See, I can't just prime the whole part. Because I'll lose all these paint lines. And the paint lines are a critical part of this. It took me... It took me a lot of hours out in a cold garage to get these lines where I wanted them. I also have another little thing I'm thinking about because in the pictures that we shot from this little fake little Photoshop, I wanted to be able to connect this dot. And I thought I could make a little piece of sheet metal to go behind here. I have to see if I have clearance. It's certainly not a problem, uh, you know, with this bike ever overheating it. It never overheats. So I'm thinking about something I could do in there. Maybe, maybe not. Mm, I don't know. But while I have this all sanded down and apart, just something to think about. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and enjoyed a Little League game. <laughs> oh, maybe I should be in a Little League. Thanks for watching. I'm going to the field. Top three. Come on, Miles. Go. Strikes Eli, I mean Liam. Come on, Miles. Strike, they swing. Watch that ball. Follow that ball. Follow that ball. Okay, I don't know what you have to swing at. Reset yourself. Put your feet inside the line. There you go. Come on, buddy. Oh, two. Good eye, Mom. Still up, buddy. Reset yourself. Come on, reset. Reset your part.